Officials in Fukushima Prefecture have started internal radiation level checks for small children. They have adapted the measuring equipment for those under the age of four. The checks cover children who lived in five municipalities designated as evacuation zones after the nuclear accident in March 2011. The equipment is designed for adults. Officials have added chairs so that smaller children can be tested. Parents have been waiting for this opportunity. Honestly speaking, I think it took too long. But at the same time, I'm also grateful that younger children have finally had the checks. An official said parents were frustrated because they didn't know the internal radiation levels of their children. We hope to offer this test across Fukushima Prefecture in cooperation with other municipalities. Japan's Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida will visit Ukraine in late August to discuss bilateral post-nuclear disaster cooperation. Kishida is expected to exchange views with Ukrainian cabinet ministers on measures to share the lessons learned from the 1986 Chernobyl disaster and the 2011 accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Kishida says he wants to confirm efforts to strengthen cooperation by exchanging information. The two countries are to share technologies to decommission the crippled plants and ways to alleviate health and environmental damage from the accidents. During the trip, the Japanese minister will also visit Hungary, which plans to build two new nuclear power plants. Kishida is to explain the advanced nature of Japan's nuclear technology to Hungarian officials to help promote the use of Japanese firms in the country's reactor project. The Abe administration sees Japan as having a responsibility to share the lessons from the Fukushima accident with the international community and to help improve nuclear plant safety. The Japanese government has released its annual report on the health of the nation's environment. It says the impact of the 2011 Fukushima nuclear accident remains serious and that concerns about decontamination and radiation exposure should be addressed immediately. This year's report was approved at a cabinet meeting on Tuesday. It prioritizes reconstruction from the March 11th quake and tsunami and the nuclear accident they triggered. The report says a large amount of radioactive substances remain in the environment more than two years after the accident. It calls decontamination of the affected areas a pressing issue and it admits that government efforts have so far failed to dispel fears over possible low dosage exposure. The report stopped short of discussing nuclear power generation as a way to tackle global warming. Before the 2011 accident, the government used the report to promote the use of nuclear energy. We hope more people will consider how to hand over a truly prosperous society to future generations. The report also says values appear to be changing in Japan since the disaster and that the country should shift away from assessing wealth only through GDP figures. Researchers in northeastern Japan have begun studying the long-term health effects of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. They say the data could spur the development of new treatments for disaster victims. Researchers from Tohoku University and Iwate Medical University will survey 150,000 residents of coastal communities in northeastern Japan. They'll use questionnaires and genetic samples to identify diseases and stress-related disorders. Project leader Masayuki Yamamoto says the findings could be important well beyond the communities he's studying. I hope the results of this survey will be used worldwide to improve post-disaster medical treatment. Yamamoto says he hopes the project will attract medical professionals and help rebuild the region's medical institutions.